Y'all remember that era of gaming where if a movie did good, it got a game right after? Like, Batman Begins or Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, shit like that? Well, that also includes television. Like, shows like The Simpsons, you know, they had Hit and Run on the PS2, and they also had the video game based off the movie in the PS3 era. And a few other TV shows are a part of that list. Now, out of that list came Family Guy. You know, Family Guy actually had a video game before Multiverse. They had it on the PS2. I didn't touch it or play it. Shit, I didn't even know about it until I started playing Back to the Multiverse. But that's besides the point. Family Guy had a second game that came out during the PS3 era called Back to the Multiverse. The game was released November 2012 and it's actually based off of one of the episodes, Road to the Multiverse. Now, the plot of the game is really simple. Stewie's half-brother Bertram from another universe came to his universe to kill him, but he decides to travel to a bunch of other universes to collect an army to destroy Stewie's universe. A whole bunch of universe shit. So now Stewie and Brian, they gotta travel through the multiverse following Bertram in an attempt to stop him. Real simple shit. Now, during this adventure, Brian and Stewie fight frat boys, the Amish, giant robot chickens from space, a whole gang of shit. There's even a mission where you have to fight disabled people at a hospital. Yes, Joe's the final boss. I know somebody's asking that. It was funny as shit. Oh no, Brian. It's crippled from... There's one big-ass cripple. Ladies and gentlemen, we here at Big Pete's House of Fun would like to apologize any member of your party has died. And uh, if they have, you will get 15% off your business. Now, your game is your typical third-person shooter. You got a weapon reel, some weapons are meant for Stewie, some weapons are meant for Brian. It's cooperative, it's solo, whatever you want to play it, it's there. You can have a friend and play as Stewie while you play as Brian, or you can play by yourself and switch between Brian and Stewie depending on what weapon you pick. This game has everything you'd want and expect in a Family Guy game. A dark reimagination of the JFK assassination, some fucked up juvenile humor, and Meg slander. Guys, what's up? Funny enough, Meg was my favorite character to play as in this game. Now, how the story mode in this game works is this. Each level is its own universe that Brian and Stewie travel through. They get to this world, they complete objectives, they fight through ways of enemies, and at the end of each mission is a boss fight. Now, my favorite parts of this game was the boss fights. When it comes to third person shooters, there's only so much you can do when it comes to that, but this game finds a way of making each one creative and special. See, the first boss fight was simple. You got a six foot seven jock frat boy that you gotta take out the game, right? Simple as fuck, just shoot him a few times with your bullets, you're cool. After that, they make the shit harder. You gotta find different ways to defeat each enemy. There was a mission where you had to defeat a giant Bertram Amish wooden statue, but in order for you to kill him, you had to shoot his eyes and wait for the Amish father to pop out the top. Crazy shit, man, crazy shit. They get creative with how you fight them, and they get creative with how they make them. Like the mission where you had to fight Joe, but he turned into like a crippled transformer. I don't know if I can say that word, but hey, it's family guy, so they've said worse. And in order for you to beat Joe, you gotta use these military cannons to take him out, but you also gotta dodge like short buses at the same time because he's chucking it at you from across the street. It's fun as hell. It's creative, it's goofy, it's juvenile, but it's fun. I'll say the best boss fight out of this entire game hands down was the giant chicken fight. After you and Stewie defeat the alien chickens and free Peter, you play as Peter and he fights the giant chicken in an airport. Instead of using guns and explosives like you normally do in the boss fights, this one is straight hands. It's three rounds, each round set in a different part of the airport. It's not as destructive and psychotic as how they get down in the actual show, but actually playing as Peter and going up against that fat bastard of a chicken that shit was fun and to make matters better it was the second boss fight before the final one so in a way it was like the game was giving you an appetizer before you finish the whole thing to conclude the game, we track Bertram back to our original timeline and fight off against Bertram's teched out dinosaur and his little army of Bertrams, all assembled by Gus. Hey guys, I'm Gus, the assistant. One thing I really loved about this sequence was just like the chicken fight, it's three rounds, but each round gets harder than the last one. Like the first round, the fucking dinosaur is shooting lasers at you. Then the second round, he's shooting rockets. And then the third round, he's throwing cars at you, but you got a bunch of 
Bertram clones running around the cut shooting at you. Fun as hell to play and cool as hell to look at, but it was hard as a bitch. I think the main point I'm trying to make is the best part about this game was the boss fights. Which is true, but I think a close contender for the best aspect of this game was its humor. If you're gonna make a game on some shit that already exists, you need to take every bit of that source's personality and infuse it into the game. And in my opinion, the game really accomplished that. This game took every part of Family Guy's humor and put it in a disc, and I loved it for it. Remember when I told you that the game did a reimagination of JFK's assassination? They did it by offing a cheeseburger. As stupid as that sounds, that's some Family Guy shit to do. Or that mission where you fought Santa Claus after a boss fight and Stewie decided to kill him by dropping a TV on his head? Yeah, check that twice, bitch! Maybe I'm just easily entertained, but that was funny as fuck. I mean, that basically sums up everything I felt about the story and everything that there is to it. Wasn't too long, wasn't too short, took me a few days to beat. It was funny as fuck. It's everything I expected from a Family Guy game. When I first saw the game and I decided to buy it, it's everything I thought it would be. Now, once you're done with the story, there's actually a few other things you can do. You can go back and see what other shit you missed, or you can play the other game modes. There's multiplayer and challenge mode. Challenge mode is self-explanatory. They give you two to do in the beginning, but as you play throughout the story mode and a lot more challenges, you get at least eight to seven. Basically, challenge mode is you pick a character and complete a task that is assigned to you. You can either rescue a bunch of people from the crippled hospital, or you can fight off waves of enemies in the evil town hall. There's a variety of things you can do with like a variety of characters. Campaign is strictly Brian and Stewie and Peter for that one mission. But when you're doing challenge mode or multiplayer, you can play as anybody. You can play as Merritt West, Meg, Death, Quagmire, literally anybody. I mean, yeah, you gotta unlock a lot of the characters and a lot of the maps first, but you can still play as whoever you want. Which leads me to multiplayer. Multiplayer is a lot different than challenge mode, but it's also kind of the same. Mind you, it's a third person shooter. So in this one, you can also go up against your friends on some Call of Duty shit on like four player split screens doing team death matches or free for alls. Now in multiplayer, there's a variety of game modes you can play with your friends other than death match. Like there's a mode where you and your friends can take on waves upon waves of enemies for basically ever. It's infinite. And ironically, this game mode is called Oh, multiverse madness ain't that some shit now as i said a lot of the characters a lot of the maps a lot of the costumes you can either unlock a lot of them in the campaign or you can get enough in-game currency to buy them in the in-game store remember this is 2012 before dlc fucking took over gaming so in-game currency and in-game stores that's actually some really cool shit to see in old games I feel like I've said everything I could about this game. I mean, it's not the best, but it's not the worst at the same time. The gameplay and the mechanics are both fun and fluid. The story mode is simple, fun, and comedic. The boss fights was great. The costumes was cool because they was ripped straight out of the show, just like everything else in the game. I think the only complaint I have for this game is I wish they also made multiplayer online. There was enough characters and weapons and maps to make that happen. I think that would have made this game a lot better if they had an option to play either online locally or online online elite. That's not a word. You know what? Nah, I'm leaving that one in. I say buy this game and play it for yourself. I got this shit for pretty cheap. So yeah, I think if I enjoyed it for the money that I spent on it, I think you'd enjoy it for the money you'd spent on it. But that's all I got for y'all for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Reggie TV. I know I said I was going to do NBA Street like after my Def Jam video, but this time I mean it. I'm going to do NBA Street after this one. So I hope y'all enjoyed this one. I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out.